So uh, the uh, title of my talk in the program is Browserscope User Tests. The actual title was Freaking Awesome Real-Time Crowdsourcing Live at Velocity Using Browserscope User Tests. But that didn't fit uh, on the website. So um, uh, we went with the shorter one. And so uh, I do this a lot. I use Browserscope. So Browserscope uh, is this project I started about four years ago. I actually started it on Dion's prompting the week that Chrome launched, the week before Chrome launched. And it's grown into a uh, <clears throat> bigger open source project now run by uh, Lindsay Simon of Twist. And um, so he had this idea for a capability about a year or two ago. And I said, no, I don't think that's that great. And it's like awesome. It is so awesome. I'm glad he didn't listen to me and he went ahead and launched it. And it's called Use Browser Scope User Test. And so what happens is um, some kind of situation will come up and I don't know, the, and no one has published anything about the answer to that across browsers. And so I can use Browserscope to gather the answers for that. So one of these came up yesterday, um, actually Tuesday, doing the tutorials. So window.onload, I'm going to set the, the problem now. Window.onload, all things being equal, it's better for window.onload to fire sooner than later. Why? Because onload is still the primary metric that we use to measure performance. So you want faster uh, is better than slower. Um, it can affect things like your Google page rank. Uh, it affects the browser busy indicator. So if you get onload to fire sooner, the browser will look ready for the user sooner. Um, and also you might have some other kind of dynamic behaviors like setting focus in the onload handler. So you want those to happen as soon as possible for the user. So I think you'll all agree with me. It's better to have a fast onload than a slow onload. So we saw a bunch of these sites that we were analyzing, Pat and I were analyzing Tuesday at our tutorial, that had uh, photo carousels in them. And they were doing a pretty good thing. They were uh, maybe showing just you know, one or four images, but then they would lazy load the rest of the images in the carousel. And that got me thinking, um, if you're lazy loading images, is that gonna block the onload event and make your onload fire later? Because to the user, you're lazy loading these images in the background. It doesn't really affect the experience that they see. But you're pushing out the onload event, which is still keeping those busy indicators going. And it's going to torpedo your uh, onload metric. So let's see a show of hands. How many people think that lazy loading images blocks the onload event? How many people think it doesn't block the onload event? How many people think it depends on the browser? OK. So that was about even, which is good. And that's why we have to run a test. So um, wow, everything. So far, it's going well. Um, so here's the test that I wrote. Uh, let's see. This one, let's see. Uh, well, no, you can't really see my cursor. OK, so I'm going to go down here. Uh, or you can see my cursor, not my mouse. OK, so I'm going to go down here. And uh, let's see, this is just some text. So first of all, I have this test page, and uh, I have a normal image. This is a resource CGI. It's uh, up on Google Code. Um, and it can return any type of resource that you want. So I have it returning a GIF that takes one minute to return. So that's just an image tag in the page. But then down here in JavaScript, I kind of like lazy load um, some images. In this case, I'm just lazy loading one image. It doesn't matter whether it's one or more. And this one is a GIF that takes four seconds to return. Okay, so you understand? And Dion brought this up last night. He said, well, has DOM content loaded already fired? So to make sure, I don't dynamically load the image until 200 milliseconds after. So by that time, DOM content loaded has fired. And then I start lazy loading my carousel images or my simulation of that. <clears throat> so the question is, does this block the onload event? So let's go back to here, and we'll try it. So um, normally, I don't like it when people in the audience have their laptops open, but we're actually going to participate, right? This is real-time crowdsourcing. So everyone in the audience is hopefully going to load this URL. And also, some people do it on phones, please. So you can do it now if you want. It doesn't really matter, because I'm not recording the results, because that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, so, but I can run this. And uh, if it takes more than a second, then it means it's going to take four seconds, which means that the images did block the onload event. So in this case, in Firefox, dynamically loading image, lazy loading images 
does block the onload event, even if you do that after DOM content loaded. But what about other browsers, especially the infamous IE uh, siblings? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a browser scope um, test for that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. So here's browser scope. Um, and there's this link here for uh, creating user tests. And I can go here and you, know, you can read this. I've done this a lot. So it's not much harder than what I'm showing you. But I'm going to do it kind of quickly just for the sake of time. So I'm going to copy the snippet. I'm going to go over here. Now, this snippet has to happen when you know the uh, result. And the way I know the result is in the onload for the window. If the onload happens in less than four seconds, I know that they did not block onload. If it happens after four seconds, I know it did. So now that I know the result right there, I'm going to paste the code. And normally, uh, this just runs uh, at the global scope. So it has this variable b test results. And you can complain about a global variable, but we won't get into that now. So I'm just going to put the global variable up there. And we're going to go back down. And I'm going to fill the results in that global variable. And this is the important thing I've learned is pick names for the result keys that you uh, want to have show up in the results table. So I'm going to say uh, Dyn for dynamic, Dyn images, um, block, onload, question mark. And I'm going to return, um, let's see, if delta is less than four seconds, then that means, uh, OK. It's less than four seconds. It did not block onload. So I'm going to return a 0. Otherwise, I'm going to return a 1. And that should be all I have to do. Let me think. OK, I think that's everything. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's why it always takes me three times to get something to work. OK, so now I think, with uh, Ben and Dion's help, uh, now I think. I have it going. Oh, oh, no. So now I actually have to create a key. And so that's going to be over here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm logged in. It uses Google Auth. There we go. And I'm going to add a test. Anyone notice the test I ran last night, the all spa awesomeness level test? <laughs> so we're going to create a new test. And we're going to call this, uh, I'll just call it dynamic images. And the URL doesn't really matter, but I'll put it in there. You can see how many I've done before. And I'll save that. And I'll get the key. Oh, it's bigger than that. OK. Go back here. And here's where I need to put that. OK. OK. So that should be it. Now. Uh, you guys can try it, but let me maybe try it first to see uh, if it's actually working. In the onload, it should put, yes, it posted the results. So now I can go back to my browser scope settings and I can say, let me look at a table of the results. And we should have a table that has a Firefox, a Firefox result. So now people start loading it. Hey! Yes. <laughs> OK, so look at this. This is so cool. So th I mean, this table did not exist two minutes ago. And now look what's happened. Look at all the results that we're getting here. I can do this thing where I can say um, highlight equals 1. What? Oh, yeah. I expected either Wi-Fi or DreamHost would go down. But you know, there was a fair number of results. Yeah, so it, it was a demonstration of browser scope and a stress test of my web host platform. <laughs> so even though every, we don't have results for everyone, this is, uh, I think, still demonstrates the point. So in about seven minutes, it, uh, that's all it took. And even if you don't want to crowdsource the results, I do this a lot for experiments that I'm just running for myself, 
where I don't want to open an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet and type all the browser names and then enter the result for everything that I'm testing. Even if it's just something for me privately, I'll create a browser scope uh, user test for it because it just saves all the results for me and it formats it nicely. But certainly when I'm trying to get coverage across browsers, especially mobile devices that I, I don't own, I use browser scope to do that and it works really well. So that's my demo. Thank you.